Today we'll be looking at this problem, which is asking whether EQTM is not recognizable and not co-recognizable. So the co-recognizable means that its complement is not recognizable here. So we're going to actually use a result that we proved last time, which says that if uh, A uh, mapping reduces to B, and B is decidable, then A is also decidable. And the reason for that was that we can just, uh, because in mapping reductions, the function is computable to transform instances of, over here to instances over here. So if I get some input for A, compute the corresponding value for B, run the decider for B, and the answer coincides. So whatever the B decider says, the A decider will say exactly the same thing. So it turns out that you can actually extend this to work with recognizable. So if, if B is recognizable, then A is recognizable for the exact same reason. But uh, we're going to actually use the contrapositive of this, which is saying if A mapping reduces to B, and A, so we're looking at A now, and we have to look at the complement, not complement, but the opposite condition. And A is not decidable or recognizable, depending on which one you're looking at, then B is not either. Okay, so this is just the contrapositive of the original statement. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use it to show that EQTM is not recognizable. So uh, we have to reduce to a, a EQTM. So that means we have to start with a problem that is not recognizable to conclude that EQTM, which is where what B will be, uh, is not recognizable. So the prototypical one is ATM complement. So what we're going to do is we're going to show e ATM redu mapping reduces to EQTM and uh, same thing, but for EQ EQTM complement. So this, this one will show that EQTM is not recognizable, and then this one, the complement is not recognizable, and then we're done. But we're going to actually use something, uh, an interesting fact, uh, that if we have A mapping reduces to B, this is exactly the same thing as saying A complement mapping reduces to B complement. And the reason is that, remember, the condition is that W is in A, the original input's in A, if and only if F of W is in B. So if the input that we get is not in A, the corresponding F of W is not in B. So you can use the exact same function as you use here. So what we're going to uh, do instead here is we're going to uh, prove the following. So here, this is going to correspond to ATM mapping reduces to EQTM complement. And A ATM for this one mapping reduces to EQTM no complement. EQTM no complement. Okay, so it's just easier to work with ATM than the complement because you have to worry about whether the input actually encodes a Turing machine in a string or not. Um, so it's just easier to work with ATM. So uh, use this complement trick uh, whenever uh, possible. Okay, so here let's prove that ATM mapping reduces to EQTM complement. So that's the first one. So here we have to be presented with an actual Turing machine and input. So on input MW where M is a Turing machine and W is in sigma star. So what are we going to do? Well we have to output uh, a pair of Turing machines because we're doing a mapping reduction. We have to, we're basically making that function f that 
takes inputs of ATM or, or really any input and produces some output. It doesn't say accept or reject, it actually produces an output. So here, what we wanna do is we want to uh, do the following. So we're going to make, as the first step, we're gonna make a Turing machine M1 that uh, rejects all strings. So I'm actually gonna make this a different color so it's not all pink. So let's make it, I don't know, blue. I didn't get quite all of it. Uh, so then let's say for step two, well, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna have a second machine. We're gonna make M2 that runs M on W and, oops, and accepts if M accepts. There's no quotes on it. Okay, so uh, this may seem a little weird what we're doing here, but obviously the first machine's language is empty because that's what we define it to be. So it's completely empty. The second one, well, it accepts its own input. So M2 can get any old input, uh, independent of M and W here. So if M accepts W, we will accept everything, or M2 will accept everything. If M does not accept W, M2 accepts nothing. So the behavior of the second machine, so, oops, I meant this to be green. So L of M2 is going to be two things. It's either going to be the empty set if M accepts W. Oops, I meant that to be sigma star. That should be sigma star. And empty otherwise. And what we want to do here is we want to output this pair of Turing machines. So step three is we're going to output M1, M2, and that's it. So let's actually think about this. So if M accepts W, then clearly M2 accepts everything. And so the two Turing machines don't have the same language. So if M accepts W, we're going to uh, get something that is not in EQTM, mainly in the complement of EQTM. And if M does not accept W, then uh, the two machines are going to be the same or have the same language. And uh, we're going to get something that is in EQTM, so therefore is not in EQTM. Uh, yeah, so it is in uh, it is not in EQTM complement. I'm sorry, I got that messed up. So if the M accepted W, then the two machines are not the same, meaning it is in this set. If M does not accept W, which is not in this set, then we're going to get two machines which are the same, which is not in this set right here, the complement set. And so this is a mapping reduction. Uh, because we are producing uh, this output. And so therefore, ATM mapping reduces to EQTM uh, complement. All right, so let's do the other one, which is actually very, very, very similar. So here we're actually going to reduce to EQTM no complement this time. All right, so here we're, again, we're going to be given two Turing, uh, not two Turing machines, we're given two inputs, M and W and I'm not gonna write the rest of it. You know M's a Turing machine, W's a string, I don't need to say that. All right, so the, the behavior is gonna be almost identical, uh, but here we're gonna switch the behavior of M1. So uh, let M1 be a Turing machine that accepts everything. Okay, and then M2 is going to be exactly the same. Same as before. And we will output that pair of Turing machines.
exactly the same as before. The only difference is that M1 this time accepts everything versus rejects everything. And so why does this work? Well, if we get a pair, if we have M accepts W, it is in this set. We got to get something that's in this set then by the definition of mapping reducibility. Well, that means that M2 is going to accept everything. And so M1 and M2 therefore are going to be have the same language and so we are going to get two machines which are have the same language so it is in this set if m does not accept w then m2 does not accept anything and so these machines are not equivalent to each other and so we get something that is not in this set and so atm mapping reduces to eqtm notice that you didn't have to use sigma star uh you didn't have to accept everything here um, there are many ways you could have constructed these two machines. It actually doesn't really matter. As long as you have one set and another set where um, you have one machine which always sticks with one set and the other one can alternate between the two sets depending on whether M accepts W. And therefore, based on the arguments we had before, uh, EQTM is not recognizable and its complement is also not recognizable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about EQTM and its recognizability or not in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.